What's up everyone, it's Fuzzy. Welcome back to yet another MLB recap. The Nationals and the Reds game ended in one of the most thrilling fashions I can remember in quite some time. The Cardinals and the Dodgers game was a lot of fun to watch as well because Max Muncy bat flips, they're just so dang entertaining. Yankees fans are yelling for Juan Soto to get a blank check, a lifetime contract, and after seeing what he did to the Astros, I don't blame them. There was a lot of drama down in Miami. Fans were booing players. Players were calling out front office decisions, and Bobby Witt Jr. was one hit away from the cycle by the third inning yesterday. Before we show the highlights, I just wanna give a massive shout out to all of you guys. We gained over 400 brand new subscribers yesterday. That blew my mind. Can we gain over 500 today? That would be even crazier. And just a reminder, Recap is presented by SeatGeek. Use code FUZZY to save 20 bucks off your tickets. And if you like fantasy sports, download Underdog Fantasy using my code FUZZY. You can get up to a $100 deposit match. They got baseball, basketball, any sport that you can think of. Now we do have some suspensions to go over before we talk about the actual game recap. So Yenesis Cabrera of the Jays. He was given three games for shoving Jose Caballero in the face. Now, a lot of Jays fans were saying it was instigated by Caballero, but you just can't do that to another player. Mets relief pitcher Johan Ramirez was also given three games for throwing behind Reese Hoskins. So this was in the game after McNeil and Hoskins were yelling at each other. Hoskins had a huge game and then they threw at him late in the game, which is just dangerous. You don't do that. One more small update before we talk about the games from yesterday. The heir to Buster Posey. He was supposed to be the savior for the Giants, Joey Bart. He has officially been DFA'd. He was a top 30 prospect for four straight seasons. He had a near 840 OPS in the minors. He just could not figure it out in MLB. He hit 219 with a pretty bad 623 OPS. Now he did look really good in spring. He hit 414 with seven walks. Maybe he goes to the Rays and they can save his career. I don't know. Now without further ado, let's get into the games from yesterday. CJ Abrams is primed for a monster year and that is a monster home run. He could go 20 home runs, 80 stolen bases if he keeps this up. Cincinnati, they got that run right back on an India ground out and Will Benson's double down the line gave them a lead. I'm still really annoyed that Cleveland basically gave him away for nothing. Anyway, LED the Cruz, he's fast and he hit one just outside the reach of Lane Thomas. That is a stand-up triple. Spencer Steer, he rakes, and he could be a 100 RBI guy, at least in my opinion. The Nationals did bounce back as CJ sack bunted to get two guys in scoring position, and Lane Thomas knocked them both in. The rookie, Trey, I'm gonna botch this last name, Lipscomb? Is, Lipscomb? is that how you say it? That's his first big league home run just outside the stretch of Will Benson. Again, Benson just barely missed robbing that home run, but he did not miss that one. He barrels up a pitch. He ties the game. He's going crazy. And then Christian Encarnacion, he didn't miss one either. Back-to-back -back home runs. He pummels a baseball for the walk-off W. Cincinnati, even without Marte, McLean, Friedel, their offense is going to do some damage. From one walk-off to another, the Guardians were facing off the A's. They were going for a sweep, and J.J. Blade, he kickstarted this one with a double to deep center. Este Uri, he scores easy. Is this the year? Is this the year that J.J. breaks out? Because when he was in college, he hit 347 with 27 home runs back in 2019 at Vanderbilt. Those are stupid numbers, so he's got some crazy talent. He scored on a Seth Brown single, and then J.J. drove in another run just two innings later. If he and Ruiz can break out in 2024, watch out for the top half of that A's lineup. Now, I got to hone in on Paulie Punchout, Mr. Paul Blackburn. That's the nickname that Dallas Braden gave him. He went seven shutouts. Out. Seven shutout only needed 88 pitches to do so. He was limiting hard contact all game long. That's just what he does best. Unfortunately, though, he's not going to get the W because his bullpen and defense threw the game away. That's an error to get them within one with two outs as well. And then Naylor ripped one between the first and second base gap to tie it at three runs a piece. But hey, the Guardians, they kind of felt bad. They shouldn't have been tied anyway. They allowed a free bases load of walk for the walk-off. Ozzy Albies is going to try and hit 40 this year. He is power swinging on every single swing, it seems like. And here comes Schwarber. His contact swing is most people's power swing, just stupid power. Both starting pitchers in this one, they came away with seven strikeouts. Chris Sale, he weaved around a good amount of base runners for two earned runs over five and a third. And Ranger Suarez, he did allow three, but only three base hits. I think he had seven strikeouts as well, like I just said. Philly, they're going to try and mount a comeback in the seventh. And luckily, Johan Rojas, he is blazing fast. He beat out the double play. Then he came around to score after singles from Schwarber, Turner, and those guys both scored. That ball was in and then out of Adam Duvall's glove. He almost saved the Braves again. Alec Bohm, he is just untouchable with runners in scoring position in the regular season. Last year, he hit 345 with a near 870 OPS with Ducks on a pond. Castellanos, he grabs the final out in the Phillies. That's their first W of 2024. So we have back-to-back 5-4 -back ball games. Rookie Victor Scott finally got to show off that 80-grade speed. 80-grade is the max. He secured his first hit, then he flew around to score. Goldie knocked 
locked him in, and then Scott was able to score again later on in the fifth inning. He had a double, and then Brennan Donovan had an RBI single. Staying with Donovan, Alex Vesia had one of the worst appearances you could possibly have. Three walks, a hit by pitch. So St. Louis, they're given a free run, and there's another free run on catcher's interference. That's happened a couple times already to the Dodgers. But here comes the Dodgers, and the charge was led by Otani. He ripped a 115.8 mile per hour double. He scores easy on a double from Tay Oscar, and Tay Oscar clutched up again. This time for a two run home run, and there's another two run home run. This time off the bat of Max Muncy. Muncy has four 30 home run seasons since 2018. He wants number five. That was a. I mean, look at that bat flip. So that's all she wrote for this one. The Dodgers do make the comeback as the ageless wonder Daniel Hudson. He secured his first save of the season. Game number four of the Yankees and the Astros. Jose Trevino has always had solid bat to ball skills because he just kind of throws his bat with two strikes. And there he is putting the ball in play. The Yankees were up by, okay, it's not a normal Yankees Astro series unless Altuve goes yard. It's all good though because newcomer John Birdie, he blooped in his first RBI. And then Aaron Judge had a sack fly in the fifth. And they really needed every run that they could get because Houston kept on fighting and fighting. Kyle Tucker, there's an RBI double. Yiner Diaz, an RBI as well. Houston, they're for sure starting off slow, but this lineup is as deep as it gets. It's almost not fair. So it's 3-3 three to three in the ninth. Hater on the bump. Glaber, he steals second to set up a huge base knock opportunity for Juan Soto. And there it is. 3-2 count the other way. One of the most freakishly talented hitters this game has ever seen. Nine hits in four games. He leads the AL in hits, by the way. There was a lot of traffic in the ninth inning for Clay Holmes, but oh my, John Birdie, he saves the game. If that one gets past him, Houston's gonna tie it up and maybe even win. For Dugo, he pulled a Ben and Tenney from the playoffs a few years ago. He slid, he closed this one out, and that is a sweep for the Yankees. So we know that the Angels had a team meeting after the second game of the season, which is not a great sign, but hey, let's see if they could bounce back and be inspired. Nolan Shanuel, 32 games on base to begin his career. He's approaching a record. Taylor Ward, he appreciated that. A 107 mile per hour two run home run, his second home run already of the year. Zach Neto, he drove in Luis Ranjifo. That was Neto's first hit and RBI of the season. There's another run. The Angels will take it. It's four to nothing after two. And Reed Detmers, he aged his fan base by maybe 50 50 years in the second because his command was awful. Hit by pitches, a walk with the bases loaded. Now, luckily, he avoided a lot of damage. He only allowed one single run, and then he ended up tossing a beauty. Baltimore, they're a juggernaut offense, so when you can limit them to two base hits over five while punching out seven, yeah, Reed Detmers, he wants that ace crown for the Angels. Carlos Estevez, he secured his first save as the Angels do, in fact, get their first W of the year. They are not a terrible team on paper. They can win some ball games. All right, let's find another game that ended up with a 4-1 score. Milwaukee is trying to beat the Mets three times in a row. Willie Adamas, he laced one just over the glove of Brett Beatty at third base, and Yelich, he motored around to score. The 20-year-old Jackson Chorio sent one to right field and just barely missed his first big league home run. He's going to have to settle for an RBI double, but that's his first big league extra base hit. And look at how quickly momentum can shift in the game of baseball. There's an RBI for the former Brewer, Tyrone Taylor. Hoskins, he dribbled into an inning-ending double play, so the Mets are fired up, and the bases were juiced in the fourth inning. Omar Narvaez, he crushed one. Just uh, got to hit the weight room, eat his Wheaties, and that's going to be a fly out. Rookie Oliver Dunn, he drove in his first career RBI, and then William Contreras sliced an RBI double the other way for the game's final run. Yoel... Piumps, I think that's how you say his last name. He got his first save for the Brewers. So we've shown a few low scoring games. What about some offensive explosions? We're gonna make our way to San Diego, which by the way, I wish I was there. The weather, the ballpark, I might move there for a year before I pass away. Okay, sorry, got distracted. Tatis, that's a ground rule double to set up a situation where you have two runners in scoring position for Manny and there's a pass ball for one and Manny, he jolted a double to center. It's now two nothing. And I tried to tell you guys in the off season, Luis Campusano is gonna erupt Pause. That is a five spot in the first off of the newly acquired Dalton Jeffries. Okay, maybe he's not on the team anymore after this. Another RBI extra base hit for Jay Cronenworth and ha Sung Kim. He belted his first home run of the season. He had three base hits on this one alone. Jackson Merrill, the 20-year-old, drove in his first career RBI. Both he and Xander, they scored on another double from Manny Machado. Manny now has seven RBIs in six games. The Padres, they ran it up to 13 on the day after Camp Usano had his fourth RBI. Even without Soto, the Padres lineup, they can compete with anyone. The Royals have a sneaky deep lineup as well. Look at Salvi ripping a tall three-run home run in the first. That started an onslaught of scoring for the Royals. Kyle Isbell, who's a product of UNLV, a college down the street from me, he went yard. Michael Garcia, 
Who is this guy? I mean, I predicted that he was going to break out, but he had four home runs last year in 123 games. He already has two on the season. Salvi, there's a short swing, his fourth RBI of the day. And now we get to have some fun because Bobby Witt Jr. stepped up with a single and a double already under his belt. And there's the home run. He was a double away from the cycle after three innings. He's hitting 534 with 14 total bases. That leads the AL. Nelson Velasquez, he socked one out as well. That was the fifth home run of the day for the Royals. Now let's go find their starting pitcher, Brady Singer, because he was incredibly disappointing last year, but not in this one. Zero after zero, strikeout after strikeout, seven scoreless on the day for Brady Singer. With 10 strikeouts, Cole Reagans, Seth Lugo, Brady Singer, they all had really good starts to begin the season. The Blue Jays had a field day against the Tampa Bay openers. Justin Turner, he owns lefties, so that's no surprise right there. Alejandro Kirk, he played a Vladimir Guerrero Jr. on another RBI single. And Randy, he stole back some momentum, another Apo Taco. He has two home runs and two stolen bases already. He is trying for his fourth consecutive 2020 season. That's 20 home runs, 20 stolen bases. Justin Turner, he got that run back and more. He eats lefties for breakfast. He drove in two more. Now now make it a four RBI day after that pimp job. He's 39 years old, yet he has 33 doubles, 24 home runs, and 100 RBIs over his last 150 games. Davis Schneider, that is an impressive swing. I was watching live and audibly said, wow, like it was only 89 miles an hour, but man, that was a short and compact swing. Gosman, he was trying to power through some shoulder issues and still managed to strike out six before being taken out after four and a third. Biggio, he drove in their final run right before, I'll show this for race fans, Isaac Paredes, he belted his first home run. The Jays win big, nine to two. So those were a few high scoring blowouts. What about a few games that bull both teams scored a bunch. Now, prior to this one, obvious El Garcia, he said he did not like the fact that he was getting booed by Marlins fans after one at bat, and he called out the fans. He said that he's trying, but honestly, his contract is one of the worst in baseball, so he's not fully innocent, but I get it. Trey Turner, he was so much better after getting cheers, so it does mean a lot to get support. Miami fans had a lot to cheer for early because Jake Berger drove in Luis Arise, and Jazz went lefty-lefty for the Grand Slam. Oh. He's so good. A botched dive by Brian De La Cruz allowed two to score for Alika Williams, who ended up at third base with a triple, obviously. Again, it just goes to show you how quickly momentum can shift in baseball. The bases were stacked for Reynolds, and Trevor Rogers just, like, didn't go for it. There was a free RBI. He got out of the inning, but then Pittsburgh fought back again in the fifth. Cabrian had an RBI. He makes it 5-4. to four. And Avi, there you go. Silence the booze. Silence the haters. His first of the year. And um, things are about to get a little bit rowdy. Rowdy Telez with the go-ahead three-run blast. I thought this was going to be a pop-up to the shortstop, and it just kept going and going. Then the newcomer for the Marlins, Nick Gordon, he tied it against David Bednar, who has been a buzzsaw over the last few years. So that forced extra innings where pinch hitter Jason DeLay, he bunted in pinch runner, I almost said Tyler O'Neill. It's definitely O'Neill Cruz. You're just never going to catch O'Neill Cruz. He is way too fast. Then there was a bases little walk to make it 9-7. And then Hunter Stratton for the Pirates. He struck out two in the bottom half. His first career save. Miami drops to winless. They are 0-4. Jazz, he called out the front office and the fact that they left the roof open because they wanted to get some natural air in there or something. But there were some nasty shadows because of it. Honestly, I would kind of just say, Jazz, you had a lefty-lefty grand slam in the shadows. The Pirates had no issues. They just swept you. It's probably best just to tip your cap not saying anything. Uh, by the way, Burger King, they had a promo. Every time the Marlins won at home, they would give away free food. So even though the Marlins are losing, Burger King is winning because they're getting promoted without actually having to give anything away yet. Let's head to Texas where we had yet another fun back and forth game. Christopher Morrell, he has some serious pop. He launched a three-run tater, but like I said, it was a back and forth. Semyon, he knocked in two, and he's building a serious late bloomer case for the Hall of Fame. He's got a 122 OPS plus since 2019 and 50 DRS since 2018. So He's a stud in the box and on the field. Ian Happ extended his team's lead by one. Then Leody let it get past them for a free run to Chicago. Semyon, he got that free run right back, though. He barely missed a two-run home run. And Texas, they want to tie it. Rookie Wyatt Langford easily drove in two, but he's greedy. He doesn't want two bags. He wants three, and he gets there. That ties it at 5-5. Five, five. Now, nothing happened until the ninth inning when Semyon, he saved the game with a backhand and throw to home. Now the infield can kind of back up, play normal defense, but uh, you just can't catch it or field it if it's not put in play. That is a go-ahead walk, and that's the ball game. Say yeah, he turned on a pitch for a two-run single, and then Cody Bellinger had enough velo on that to cause some trouble. It's not fielded properly. That is an RBI single. Adbert Alzoli, he's able to bounce back after blowing a game earlier. He strikes out two, and yeah, the Cubs win 9-5. to Here we go, the Tigers and the White Sox. Eric Fetty was making his first MLB start since 2022. He had an all-time bad start to his career, a 5.5 ERA. 
through 455 innings. He goes to Korea and he wins KBO's version of a Cy Young with 207 strikeouts and 180 innings. He was amazing. He was showing the improved strikeout stuff early. He was nasty, but so was Jack Flaherty. Nothing through two innings when Corey Lee popped off for his first home run. He's a former top prospect for the Astros and he raked when he was in the minors for Houston. And now it's pizza pizza time. Kerry Carpenter, he tomahawked a home run to tie it and Jake Rogers, I guess he was still hungry after that first pizza. He's the most underrated catcher in baseball in my opinion. Flaherty, he looked very good. Six frames of one run ball. He struck out seven on just four base hits and as soon as he left, Paul DeYoung, he tied it so Flaherty's not going to get the W. What if Paul DeYoung bounces back? That would be fun. The score was not enough at two going into the ninth when Andy Abias, who had a very impressive spring, he turned on a sinker. He drove in Matt Beerling. The Tigers take the lead and Jason Foley, he's going to give them a W. He gets his second save of the year. The final two games of the day, they both ended with a 5-1 score. Arizona, they were debuting their brand new red unis and Corbin Carroll stole second. He ended up at third because there was a terrible throw. He could have scored anyways. He's just that fast. Florida's is already up to nine RBIs and Christian Walker he's trying to keep up he has two home runs and five RBIs through five games Brandon fought he was really good he allowed just one measly run over five then again he was facing the measly Rockies but he struck out nine on 87 pitches I don't know what happened here with Nolan Jones but that one just popped out of his glove a free run for Arizona I'm gonna need 10 home runs over the next month for Nolan Jones speaking of 10 Lourdes now has 10 RBIs he has 19 total bases he only trails Mookie Betts for the MLB lead usually he's a slow starter because coming into this game April and March was by far his worst month in terms of OPS he was not a fast starter at all but now he is speaking of starting hot Bryce Miller he started as hot as you can get and he struck out the side and then Garrett Whitlock we call him the warlock he said anything you can do I can do but better he was disgusting as well he also struck out the side both guys had the sinkers going which unlocks the off speed but that fastball from Miller was just a little bit too flat that's why people throw sinkers because they have some movement with high velocity Tyler O'Neill is trying to bounce back in a contract year. He's going to be a free agent after 2024. That's his second home run. He also has three walks to one strikeout. That's not going to last, but he is seeing beach balls right now. The Mariners tied it on a Josh Rojas single, but uh, that was quickly erased moments later on a three-run moonshot from Emmanuel Valdez. Look at his swing. He is one of my favorite swings in baseball. And remember, back in 2022, he had 35 doubles and 28 home runs in the minors, just in one season. The Warlock kept dicing up Seattle as Garrett finished with eight strikeouts strikeouts over five. The Red Sox rotation has been impressive to start the year. I mean, they're getting quality start after quality start. They have the second lowest team ERA behind the Yankees in all of baseball. So that's going to do it for today's recap. I hope that you guys had some fun. If you did, do me a favor, leave a like. It really helps out the channel as well as if you're brand new, hit that subscribe button. And of course, enjoy the web gems. Little jam shout out to short there. Henderson with a pick. Oh, Henderson with the bazooka. <laughs> Jumps on that one, drives it to left. Rosarena's gonna have to go to the wall. He got it. Part of this team. Lined out to left field and a chance for Langford on the slide. He makes the catch. Broke his bat, little flare. Taylor throws extends and takes one away. Bouncer up the middle. Perdomo with a tremendous play. And they got the well dial up. Line caught by Alonzo. Double play.